Hi everybody, it's Charlotte. We're here, or you're here, and I'm here, to share the final or the fourth of our series of four Creation Care Sunday School, also known as Encounter Faith Lessons for Epiphany. And I noticed that uh, views were declining. So this Sunday's lesson is a combined young children, older children, and adult, an adult, not adult, an adult encounter faith lesson on creation care. So for parents of young children, you want to fast forward to the end. And for adults and older children, uh, you can tune in to the whole message if you would like. So I am going to read for you a contemporary retelling of the creation story. And it was written by Robin Denny. Robin Denny. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and the darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And spreading outward in every direction, the universe came into being. Light and matter racing outward. And today, at the outer expanding edge of the universe, God's voice echoes on. That is as it has done for 14 billion years. Ever onward, let there be light. And there was God excuse me, and there was light, and God saw that it was good. Four and a half billion years ago, the earth was born in light and fire, formed from the collision of countless asteroids. And on the surface of the earth, there was nothing but burning molten rock, the same temperature as the sun. As the earth cooled and a crust of rock formed on the planet, on its surface, ice-rich asteroids and comets struck the face of the earth, and water vapor arose from its core, and thick clouds obscured the rock planet, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained for millions upon millions of years. And when the clouds began to clear four billion years ago, the planet was covered in a massive green ocean. And the skies were made of carbon dioxide and they were red. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. As volcanoes erupted under the green ocean, ocean the magna, magma flowed and quickly cooled, and granite was born. It floated on the heavy volcanic rock, and the land rose out of the ocean and continents formed. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation. And in the shallow seas on the edge of the continents, life came to be. And it took its energy from the sun and used the carbon dioxide of the sky and gave off oxygen. And for two billion years, simple photo photosynthesizing bacteria bubbled oxygen through the oceans, turning them blue 
and filled the sky with oxygen, turning it blue, and the atmosphere was formed. Then 700 million years ago, the young continents drifted together and blocked the movement of the oceans over the poles. And the poles froze for the first time and ice spread out over the face of the planet. For 50 million years, an ice sheet a mile thick covered the whole face of the planet and almost all life went extinct. Then as volcanoes split apart the supercontinent, the ice melted and the continents drifted, so there were shallow seas between them. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas. And then out of the destruction of extinction of life, bloomed the waters as never before. Sea creatures bloomed in the waters as never before, sea creatures that fed on other creatures. And there were at the same time, 50 million years ago, more different kinds of living things than had ever, than has ever, or had ever existed on the planet before or since. And the atmosphere was finally dense enough to protect life from the destructive rays of the sun. And 30 million years ago, life came up out of the water, first the plants, and then the creatures. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. The first age of land life was the age of the insects. Massive insects swarmed the tropical jungles of the earth. Then the amphibians came into being, and massive amphibians dwelt in the jungles. And then life was tested with another mass extinction. 250 million years ago, an age of volcanoes began again. And volcanoes erupted constantly for a million years, spewing poisonous gas that blocked the sun and forming a new supercontinent of lava. The barren supercontinent broke apart and the pieces are the continents we know today. And while they were still close together, separated by shallow seas, life flourished again on the earth. So God created the sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. From the wreckage of extinction rose the largest and most notorious creatures ever to walk or swim on the planet, the dinosaurs, who in turn gave rise to birds. Then 65 million years ago, a massive, massive asteroid six miles across struck the Caribbean. Dust and debris from the impact rain down over the whole earth. At the same time, massive volcanic eruptions began, filling the skies with sick, thick poisonous gases once again. The cloud of debris and gas blocked out the sun again and the jungles died. And with them, the dinosaur, all of the dinosaurs. And as the poisonous clouds cleared, life returned again to earth and the age of mammals began. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image 
and the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Two million years ago, the ancestors of humans came into being in East Africa. At that time, the bridge of land that connects North and South America rose out of the ocean, and the Panama blocked the flow of tropical water over the poles. And the poles froze again, and the ice ages in which we are still living began. Ice extended through the temperate zone and many living things died. Humans adapted to the ice and used it to spread out over the face of the earth. And the ice came and went in cycles of thousands of years. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. 10,000 years ago, humans began to cultivate plants and raise animals and with agriculture was born civilization. God said, see, I have given you every living plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And it was so. The work of creation has not stopped. Everywhere in the universe, from its outer edge to its core, the redemptive work of creation continues, bringing life and beauty from destruction and nothingness. The cycle of death and life and life and death, destruction and creation, creation and destruction continues. God saw that everything God had made was indeed very good. So questions for adults and older youth or young people. How does this account of creation challenge your current and personal, perhaps biblical view of creation? In what ways can this view adapt your perception of the world around you? Or in what ways can this view adapt to your perception of the world around you? All God made was good. What are some parts of creation that you don't view as good? How can you shift that view? Or how can you help to shift that view? Please join me in a prayer. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey toward your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, peace, and care for creation. And that was adapted from Pope Francis. So for the older children,
we can, um, you can talk about that version of creation. How does that view of creation align with what you've learned in science or if you've talked about evolution? And how can you reconcile that with your biblical view of creation? Can those two be brought into reconciliation and abide together? That's a deep question, but I think an important one. And for the younger children, I'm going to read a brief story of creation um, or the story of Noah and the flood. From Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Again, God said to Noah and his sons, I am going to make a solemn promise to you and to everyone who will live after you. This includes the birds and the animals that came out of the boat. I promise every living creature that the earth and those living on it will never again be destroyed by flood. The rainbow that I have put in the sky will be my sign to you and to every living creature on earth. It will remind you that I will keep this promise forever. When I send clouds over the earth and a rainbow appears in the sky, I will remember my promise to you and to all other living creatures. Never again will I let the floodwaters destroy life. When I see the rainbow in the sky, I will always remember the promise that I have made to every living creature. The rainbow will be the sign of that solemn promise. So questions for you young people. What is the promise that God made to Noah and his family? What did God use to remind Noah of the promise God made? God's promise to all of creation was to sustain life. Do you know what sustain means? You can look it up in, if you have a dictionary um, in the form of a book or in the form of an app on your parent's phone or you can look it up online. But to sustain life means to keep going, support, or take care of. Have we always helped God in the promise to sustain life? Not me and you, but human beings. Not always. What are some ways we can help with that promise? I think we've talked about that before, right? We can plant more trees. We can use less plastic. How many of you out there are doing the plastic challenge? How did that come along? Check out my, my Sunday school lesson or my Encounter Faith lesson from last week to see how mine was going. Not very well. I had a lot of plastic. Um, actually, I think what I read to you is kind of a recap of Noah's story. So you might want to go ahead and read from the Bible, Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. So we are going to make promises to one another. You can make promises to your siblings, uh, to your parents, to your grandparents, to your friends, but I will make a promise to you. And I'd like you to make a promise to me. Sometimes it can be really hard to keep promises, but when we work together, it makes it easy and fun. Have everyone think of ways we can help each other follow God's promise to sustain all of creation. Write them down together with your family. Have everyone draw a picture of ways that we can help grow our communities. Then share it with your church. And I would suggest, I know the Saldana family has already done the plastic challenge. I would suggest that all of our Epiphany families with children or even if you live by yourself, that you attempt to do the plastic challenge just one week. Collect all of your plastic in a separate trash bag and see how much there is and try to think of ways you can reduce that plastic consumption. I know that 
when I put all of that plastic I was wearing last week, when I put it in my trash can, it filled up an entire garbage bag and I had to take it out. There was no room for any other trash. So I really want to think about how I can reduce my plastic consumption, which will ultimately help the earth. So please join me in a responsive prayer or what we call an echo prayer. Dear God, thank you for promising to be with us and keep us in your care. We love being able to share in your promise of sustaining the earth. Help us to remember to look out for the beautiful world which you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll see you next week. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and mother-like women and men out there who take care of people. Thank you to our Mother Earth.